Hey, this is Ciderhelm. In this movie, I'm going to be covering the concepts of map control in the context of warding, counter warding, and the use of clairvoyance. In the first section, I'm going to cover tips and strategy, while the second section will cover specific locations. If you enjoy this guide, take a look at LearnTheLeague.com and consider picking up my full League of Legends book. Being able to see and actively track your opponents on the game map can provide a massive advantage to your team, provided your team will make use of the vision. It allows you to push, engage in team fights, and take objectives like Dragon and Baron Nasher based on real information, not just perception. By the same token, preventing your opponents from seeing and tracking your team will put them at a disadvantage. Green Sight Wards and Pink Vision Wards can both be purchased from the Consumable tab in the shop. Sight Wards cost 75 gold and offer normal vision in an area around where they're placed. Vision Wards cost 125 gold and offer both normal vision and stealth detection in an area around where they're placed. Both types of wards have a 3 minute duration and can be killed with 3 normal attacks. The duration of an allied ward can be checked at any time by clicking the ward and looking at the resource bar. This is a countdown timer that lists the remaining time in seconds. When placed, they are briefly visible and targetable to enemies, meaning they can be killed if nearby opponents react quickly. Wards can be placed a moderate distance away from your champion, allowing you to place them over walls. The stealth detection from vision wards allows them to see stealth units, including champions and placeable objects such as other wards. However, if a vision ward is placed outside of a bush, that ward will not grant vision on stealth units inside the bush, even if vision is granted in the bush through other means. Oracle's Elixir is a 400 gold consumable that grants stealth detection to the player who purchases it. This buff lasts until the player dies. Like vision wards, you will need to be inside a bush to see stealth units within the bush, regardless of whether you have vision in the bush from other sources. Allied wards are considered valid units for the Teleport Summoner spell. Using Teleport clearly gives away the location of the ward to any opponents who are paying attention to the area, but also makes the ward invulnerable. This can be used to your advantage in securing kills on Dragon and Baron Nasher, particularly if a player on the other side of the map has Teleport available and can turn the tides of a fight in your favor. In some circumstances, it can be a good method of getting a player near the enemy base quickly to take down a structure before the team can react. There are also a few champions such as Jax, Lee Sin, and Katarina who can use abilities to dash towards. If you're playing these champions, it's often a good idea to carry at least one ward with you for this purpose. If you're playing on the same team as them, keep it in mind if you need to help them escape in a pinch. And if you're playing against them, you'll want to be more vigilant about destroying enemy wards when possible. Warding is the process of increasing your own map vision and map awareness through the use of wards. Counter warding is a process of removing your opponent's map vision and map awareness by getting rid of their wards. Counter warding is important so long as it offers a tangible advantage to your team. If your team will not or cannot realistically use it to their advantage, getting rid of a ward is a costly investment. If you're using a vision ward, you'll be paying a premium. If you're using Oracle's Elixir, you'll be putting it at risk if you move significantly out of position to destroy the ward. What amounts to a tangible advantage? In the early game, it can mean being able to push and zone your opponents more effectively because they're afraid of being ganked. Being able to engage Dragon and Baron Nasher before your opponents are aware, or in such a way that they cannot guess how much health these monsters have while you're fighting them, is an advantage. In this case, I recommend warding before these objectives become available in the mid and late game, as it will give you warning if a team is aware of the timer and is preparing to fight them the moment they respawn. In the early game, counter warding tends to be specific, and pink vision wards are often suited to this. As the game progresses, denying more vision across the map allows your team more latitude and better opportunities, and this is where Oracle's Elixir tends to be more effective. Counter warding is virtually always good in game, but is often not necessary for every single ward. Don't put yourself in a position where you're being baited into bad situations by counter warding wards that you didn't need to take out. Both warding and counter warding are mind games, and the better you shut down your opponent's vision while increasing your own, the more your team can engage based on reality, while your opponents must engage based on perception. Make sure you carefully check for enemy wards as you pass through a bush while you have Oracle's Elixir active. If you're moving quickly and are watching other events, you can miss wards that will only pop up for a half second or so. Be deliberative when moving between bushes to make sure you're not missing anything. Towers are naturally defensible, providing strong area vision and high damage output. 
In balanced fights, towers are safe havens and fallback points that allow for extension in the area around them. Losing or destroying a tower can completely shift the balance in a match in terms of vision and map awareness. Not only do you lose the vision of the tower, but you also lose the easy fallback position that makes nearby warding much safer for your team. If you lose a tower, take extra steps to ensure you have vision in the area. You cannot safely extend until you do. On the flip side, if you take a tower, take extra steps to destroy any wards they may try to place, as this turns a large area on their side of the map into a hostile territory for them. This prevents them from easily farming, can offer you more gank opportunities, and can allow your team to more easily push the next tower in their lane. Understanding the effects of downed towers and map vision helps to understand one of the broader concepts of map control. While the map is easily divided into two halves, it is better to think of it in terms of smaller zones. Let's say the purple team, which resides on the top half of the map, has lost their bottom lane tower. As soon as this happens, a whole region around that tower, including their blue golem buff, suddenly becomes vulnerable. Losing the vision and safety from the tower is not only a real tangible loss of safety, but also means that players on the purple team have a lot more to fear. To counter this, they will need ward vision out to the river. Now let's take this one step further and say the purple team also loses their mid tower. Once this happens, the entire area between the two towers, including Blue Golem and the three wolf pack, is completely vulnerable to purple team. They will need at least two wards to be safely in this area, and will have less time to react to them as the wards need to be placed in more tightly to cover the entrances. Losing mid tower has the greatest negative impact in terms of map zones, as it affects both red buff and blue buff, along with Dragon and Baron Nasher, and the length of the river. If you've lost this tower, you'll want to do more to recover vision in this area. If you've taken this tower, your team should usually be aggressive in asserting your presence in the vulnerable zones. Remember, this is largely a mind game, and your goal is to give them the perception that you're in control of their territory. Map zones overlap each other, and are extended further depending on your vision and the champions in that area. For example, purple team's mid lane and bottom lane affect how vulnerable their blue golem buff is, and champions who can move extremely quickly can assert control over more of this territory. Response time and quickly countering players entering your territory is important to maintaining control. Vision does not matter if you're not going to react to someone entering your territory. The main map zones are as follows. Top and bottom river. This is controlled primarily with wards. Middle, covering both red buff and blue buff. Top, crossing over to the red buff for purple team, and crossing over to the blue buff for blue team. Bottom, crossing over to the blue buff for purple team, and crossing over to the red buff for blue team. Because of the shape of the map, the second set of towers offers very little map control, even in the interior regions. If you're on the offense, this means taking down the outer towers can fairly easily give you complete map control of their territory. If your own towers have been taken, wards are usually necessary to safely move in your interior. The players responsible for warding is a team decision. However, it is very common to see support players responsible for the bulk of warding, with a jungling champion helping out. In this setup, other team members are usually responsible for warding and protecting their own lane, particularly if they're alone in the lane. Your opponents may choose to gank based on how ineffective they believe you will be at preventing a kill. For example, if the bottom lane is well warded by your team, even counter warded, and gank attempts have been unsuccessful, that region is higher risk for your opponents. Even if they don't get killed themselves, they may be wasting time with relatively little to show for it. When this happens, the middle and top lanes will become higher priority for your opponents, provided they aren't equally well defended. This is why it can be very important, especially in the early and mid game, to make sure you're controlling vision on areas of the map where a support or other player may not be in a position to provide wards themselves. Keep this rule in mind. If you don't die because you placed a ward, that ward paid for itself several times over. While you may feel it is ideal to use your gold elsewhere, you should invest in wards whenever necessary. Warding is important, but there is such a thing as too much warding. You will need to balance the contribution that more wards has to your team versus the risk you're taking by not investing in items that benefit your team in skirmishes and teamfights. Simply placing wards, particularly alone, may leave you at a distance or bad entrance to fights that may be coming up. 
Provided you are generating a decent amount of gold, such as with a Philosopher's Stone and Heart of Gold, a good rule of thumb is that you should be purchasing at least two wards when you go back to base, but may be going overboard if you purchase five, unless you've got a specific reason, such as Extended Baron Control. This is situational, and it depends on whether your teammates are also helping with vision. Having vision is amazing, but if your team is losing fights without gaining objectives, it won't amount to anything. Make sure you're not hindering your team. Before your team can carry around Oracle's Elixir in the mid and late game, you may want to look for quick kills on opponents who are frequently using stealth abilities such as Akali. If you're fairly confident you or your ally can kill these players given a few moments of uninterrupted burst, try to place a pink vision ward in the location they will most likely be stealthed. If at all possible, conceal this action by placing it while they don't have vision over that area of the map, such as while your minions are pushed to the tower. And, if at all possible, before they have had a chance to see you had the ward in your inventory. Alternatively, you can just hold on to a pink ward until they're stealthing to finish them off. Since the gold return will generally be much higher than the cost of the ward, this can be a good investment if you're quick to react. As a note, Oracle's Elixir is not always best to have only on your support in regards to stealth champions, as it can lead to a positioning issue. Support tend to have specific positioning requirements that may put them a bit away from your disruptors or carries. To actually hunt down and kill stealth champions, it helps that the players that are either being attacked by those champions, or are capable of securing kills on those champions, have an Oracle's Elixir running themselves. Depending on the situation and the current matchup, you may need the assistance of teammates to effectively ward and counter ward around the map. The first factor is whether the opposing team has a vision advantage of their own, and whether they're quickly acting on that vision. It can be very difficult to win the vision game once your opponents already control most of the map. The second factor is how reckless your opponents are. Most advanced players will not put themselves at risk by moving blindly into the fog of war while several opponents are not accounted for. The fear of being caught out of position and being ganked is a very real thing, and it's one of the biggest advantages of denying an opponent their map vision. By mid-game, a player wishing to place wards can usually do so alone if they have already denied the enemy vision, and will have some advance warning from their own vision on approaching enemies. It's also a good rule of thumb to immediately take opportunities to ward and counter ward when you can see threats on the opponent's team somewhere else on the map. This is the safest time to move around solo. However, less experienced opponents are less likely to have picked up the habit of being careful about overextending and avoiding potential traps. This will actually make it harder to safely place wards alone if you're playing a less survivable champion. On the flip side, roaming with your team is more likely to net kills on opponents who are out of position. The bottom line is that warding without teammates is safest when you already have a vision advantage over your opponents. By warding and counter warding early and often, you can more safely maintain this advantage without needing your team to break off every time you need to refresh vision. Once wards are out, they should usually be treated as secondary objectives. If you can defend a ward before it is counter warded, do so. Keep an eye on wards that are protecting your lane and quickly respond if you reasonably can. It can be frustrating when an enemy counter wards you, especially in the early game. However, if the ward was necessary to your survival, or acted as a deterrent, it can sometimes be to your advantage to immediately replace a ward even if there's a very high chance they'll kill it again. For example, if a player placed a pink vision ward in the river bush and killed your ward, placing a green sight ward may result in them countering you again while their vision ward is still active. Immediately placing a new ward can lead to two potential benefits. First, it can waste the time of a jungler or another player who is counter warding if they choose to go back and take out the new ward. At the same time, you're aware of exactly where they are and they can't threaten another lane. Second, it can be used to bait opponents out once you're ready to defend your ward and potentially kill them. Clairvoyance is a summoner spell that grants vision for a brief time at any location on the map, regardless of your own distance from that location. This spell does not reveal stealth, but it does reveal inside bushes, even when it is not cast within those bushes. Clairvoyance markers can be seen by the opposing team, even in the fog of war, so using clairvoyance can give away an area of the map you're interested in. If you suspect an opponent is waiting in a nearby bush, such as a jungler waiting for a gank, using clairvoyance on them may discourage them from sticking around. At about 8 to 10 seconds into the matchup, you will want to cast Clairvoyance near the enemy summoner platform. 
This can give you an idea what starting items your opponents are choosing and may give an indication which lanes your opponents are headed to. If your opponents are moving together down one lane, that may indicate that they're going to protect their jungle or invade your own. Clairvoyance is often best in the early game when you can accurately determine where a jungler or roamer is. This is especially true against junglers with very strong early ganks. Champions have different starting preferences, including killing the Red Lizard or Blue Golem very quickly. Many champions can choose either, while some champions are more limited to killing the Blue Golem early due to mana constraints in their jungling route. For example, an Amumu will tend to start at Blue Golem due to the mana regeneration buff, whereas a Lee Sin is more flexible and may start near Red or Blue. Because jungling is different for every champion, and because many champions have options, there's no hard rule to tell you the best places to clairvoyance at any time. However, here's some quick notes. Depending on the jungler, choose between checking the opposing blue buff or red buff between 1 minute and 45 seconds and 1 minute and 55 seconds. If you've used clairvoyance on the blue buff and your team has vision around your blue buff, the enemy is most likely doing a route that starts near red. Junglers who pick up an early red buff are more likely to also go for an early gank. If the purple team goes for red, expect a potential early gank at top. If the blue team goes for red, expect a potential early gank at bottom. If either of these are your lane and you're also providing wards, it's a good idea to ward the gank locations immediately. Consider using your next clairvoyances at the lanes you feel are in the most danger. This is even more true if the lane you feel is in the most danger is also not warding to protect themselves, such as a solo top lane. Even though it can be frustrating to use the ability to defend players who won't ward, your goal is ultimately to win the match, and it can be worth it to compensate for them by doing this. In particularly rough matchups, a solo player may not even be able to move near a place where they can ward, so clairvoyance will help them protect themselves while placing their own ward. If a jungler goes for Blue Golem first and you catch them, watch out for a potential early gank at middle. Also, an early blue means you should use Clairvoyance again around 7 minutes and 40 seconds shortly after it respawns to check on their blue buff again, as they may either not have gotten to it quickly enough, or they may be taking it then. There are no hard and fast rules to Clairvoyance, and a completely defined list of timers is as varied as the champions and situations you come across. However, get a feel for the champions you're against and when they may be moving to key locations. It may even help to play some junglers yourself to get a feel for them. Using clairvoyance defensively is great, but it's always worth keeping in mind that the best players will often use it offensively as a means of giving their teams opportunities. If you're checking the jungle with your clairvoyance, you have two choices. Normally, you should try to check two creep camps by placing the clairvoyance between them. For red, consider the double golems and the red lizard. For blue, get the wolves and the blue golem. This maximizes your chance of catching the jungler. Your other choice is to use clairvoyance more directly near a major buff in order to get vision on any opponents that may be there. This is usually not ideal, especially since it can indicate that you're looking to invade. At Dragon and Baron Nasher, use clairvoyance in the river in such a way that you can see them and whether they're engaged, but may also see nearby opponents. If you're taking these objectives with your team, consider using Clairvoyance to check beyond the outer wall for anyone either waiting to move in to steal the kill, or attempting to snipe it with long range abilities. If it looks like an opponent may be intentionally baiting your teammates towards a location, quickly use Clairvoyance to see the most likely area where opponents may be hiding, particularly in bushes along the path. Clairvoyance is fantastic in its ability to see in bushes. Keep this in mind when an opponent is attempting to flee or juke through bushes. If your team loses vision, they cannot use normal attacks or most targeted spells. Even the briefest interruption can fully break a spell combo or prevent a killing blow. Get in the habit of using clairvoyance before an enemy reaches a bush to prevent them from breaking vision while your team continues to focus them. In rare circumstances, you can pull this off with wards as well. A well-placed clairvoyance ahead of your own path can give you an idea of when you can't be stopped. In other words, when enemies are not in the path ahead of you, you can reasonably assume that you can safely move in. This is fantastic for positioning your team, but also for placing wards and counter warding. In this role, clairvoyance can be used to help recover safe territory for your team when you're otherwise shut down. If someone on your team is running Clairvoyance, it's often a good idea to request they use it at a location if you suspect opponents are there. 
This will depend on the player and whether they catch your request quickly and feel it's a good idea, but in many cases they will oblige. The spell is frequently used on educated guesses rather than hard knowledge, so occasionally directing it somewhere you strongly feel opponents are, or want to make sure they aren't, such as at a jungle buff you're about to take, may put it to better use. At the beginning of a match, blue and purple team each control one half of the map. However, the hard control mechanisms are towers, which means players can move in through the jungle unless they are stopped by their opponents. Knowing that, one of the goals with early wards is to make sure you're aware of opponents who enter your jungle. This isn't always as important as using wards to protect your lane, but fortunately you can achieve both at the same time. Controlling your jungle is sectional. If your bottom lane and mid lane are properly warded, you will have warning when opponents are coming into your bottom jungle. However, if either your mid lane or top lane are not properly warded, your opponents will be able to gain access to the top jungle before your team can reasonably react. It follows, then, that failing to properly ward around the mid lane can have the greatest negative impact on the game, regardless of the impact it has on the mid lane itself. It opens up map-wide counter jungling and alternative gank routes that are harder to respond to. Effective warding involves not only becoming aware of opponents, but also having time to react to them. This is true both in defensive and offensive warding. Enough theory, let's get into the specifics on great places to ward throughout the game. I'll be breaking these down by the area of the map you're controlling with them. Most of the following sections will involve protecting individual lanes. However, if your team is on the same page and you can keep a perimeter warded consistently throughout the game, there is a preferred setup for this. At top lane, the enemy tribush should be warded. At mid lane, the enemy red lizard ramp should be warded, as well as the ramp behind the enemy blue golem. At bottom lane, the ramp near the enemy blue golem exit should be warded, ideally in such a way that you can see near dragon as well. If you're playing the purple team, flip each of these accordingly. If you ward these while keeping tabs on your opponents and preventing them from pushing hard enough that they can use alternate routes, you will know when anyone is crossing into your territory. You'll still want to consider other warding options described below, particularly side bushes, but that will depend on the back and forth in your lane. This is very cost efficient and effective and gives you more options for offensive action. With limited wards, the most important single ward location for protecting the jungle is in the river, a little ways out from the lane. While you won't see players inside the gank bush, you should see them entering or leaving the bush from the river. Warding the tri bush is also a good choice regardless of which team you are, as it can give you a very strong advanced warning on ganks, particularly from players approaching through the jungle. For the purple team, who control the top half of the map, a tri-bush ward may be the only lower river ward necessary, as long as dragon is also being warded. Warding the gank bush itself is preferred if you either cannot safely extend into the river or your teammates may not be paying enough attention to the map to see someone entering the bush. It is also good against a team that is counter warding, as it requires them to move to the bush itself to take it out. One final benefit is that you can see champions who are recalling from this bush, meaning gankers who are camping here will be visible. The gank bush is usually not preferred, but it works. Place the ward at the farthest point away from your tower as possible. The side bushes can be important for warding. This is especially true if your opponents would otherwise bully and zone you by using a bush, where quickly dropping vision makes it much harder to effectively counterattack. Warding a side bush is also good if your lane is being pushed regularly past the midpoint of the lane, as it makes you aware of players who may be attempting to capitalize on your lack of vision by sneaking into the side bushes to contribute to a gank. Top lane is symmetrical to bottom lane with the team positions reversed. For the blue team, who control the bottom half of the map, a ward at the tri bush and at the entrance to Baron Nasher and blue buff can provide the greatest warning of incoming players while protecting your jungler. For the purple team, the same setup works provided your minions are regularly pushing to the midway point of the lane. In other words, it works unless an enemy can use the lane itself to get in the gank bush without you becoming aware of it. Side bushes are important if you've been pushed towards your tower and you want to push any significance back out while you are not aware of the location of their jungler or roamer. The most important ward spots for mid lane are at the ramps near the red lizard buff. This ward should be positioned in line with the crease in the map to provide the best vision. This covers one of the best gank routes against mid lane while also making it extremely clear when opponents are heading into the jungle. 
This spot can be altered a little to see when a jungler is attacking race, though this comes at the expense of some river vision. On the opposite side of the lane, there are two solid options for warding. The first is at the bend near the other ramp, giving vision over part of the river, as well as players entering or leaving the large bushes at the entrance to the river. The second is a bush further back, covering the corridor between Blue Golem and the Three Wolf Pack. This is very effective, especially for teams that give the blue buff to their AP caster, as it covers the route and works against junglers or roamers. The solo bush in the river is functional as a warning that someone is entering your jungle, though it doesn't give as much warning of intent as other ward locations. This is usually used if you're low on wards and want to cover the jungle entrances, as well as a high risk area near Dragon or Baron Nasher. Alternatively, you should ward counter ward or clairvoyance this location as a stepping stone to ward more desirable locations. Finally, the large side bushes can be useful to ward, especially if you don't currently have other vision near them and can't risk going into the river. These are more useful in the later game, when you're anticipating team fights occurring there or already know players are there and need to be able to target them for an initiate. If you're careful, you can place a ward into these bushes over the thick walls. Both the Blue Golem and Red Lizard are very effective places to ward, and this is even more true if you're counter jungling. At the Red Lizard, place the ward at the very end of the bush where it loops around so the ward will have vision on the monsters. It's important that it remains in the bush though, as it prevents a player from pulling the large lizard to the bush to conceal their actions. At the Blue Golem, place the ward in the middle of the bush in such a way that it has vision over the Blue Golem while also having vision over all the potential entrances. You may also choose to ward the bush near your middle tower and mid lane, as this gives you vision over a corridor that can act as a farming location, a team ganking bush, and an escape route that players may use. When you can safely move in the river, place a ward in front of the Dragon or Baron Nasher inlet so that you can see opponents coming through the river. If you cannot safely move in the river or believe the opposing team may already be engaged, place a ward over the back wall. While this does not offer as much vision, it is much safer. When counter warding, particularly with Oracle's Elixir, always check the back wall of these inlets for enemy wards. Unless you're very confident that your opponents do not pose a threat to a dragon or baron attempt, such as when they're visible on the opposite end of the map, you should also have at least two wards out to give advanced vision on anyone coming in. In normal circumstances, you will want wards on dragon at the top of the ramp going up to the blue golem. Additionally, the bush that ramps up near mid lane is good. Normally you'll want to place it higher up the ramp at mid lane, but if you can't see the mid lane itself, in other words if you don't have vision from minions, then you'll want to place it lower in the bush so you can see the river as well. At Baron, you'll want wards at the tri bush near top lane. You'll also want a ward up the ramp near Red Lizard. Though significantly more dangerous, you'll want a ward at the bend in the bush behind the Red Lizard wall, as this will let you see anyone attempting skill shots or waiting to jump in from behind the wall. This is usually best placed when you're falling back after successfully engaging your opponents or pushing their base. If you can place this, the ward at the ramp is less important. Keeping in mind that the map is symmetrical, purple team will mirror the locations, placing wards similar to Baron when fighting Dragon and vice versa. Dragon and Baron Nasher wards are complementary to other wards you're already placing, and in some cases may be where you've already got wards. Depending on how effective your opponents have been in the match, you may need more wards than this to safely take these objectives. If you are on the offense and taking out an enemy base, consider placing wards over the wall at points between their towers. This will help your team land skill shots and poke abilities, avoid the same, and let you know how they're shifting as a team, allowing you to more effectively choose which objectives to move to. If you're on the defense, place wards over your wall at the same points for all of the same reasons. At this point, I've covered all of the main warding spots. However, you should consider wards at any location where you believe it may give a tangible advantage to your team, or may counter a very specific play your opponents are trying to use. When playing against champions with global movement ultimates or abilities that allow them to travel a significant distance across the map very quickly, wards a little further out and in odd spots can be helpful. For example, both the top and bottom lane have small pockets near the blue buff where Nocturne is in range of using his rank 1 ultimate against opponents that are past the midway point in the river. Warding the bush here can give you vision that they are likely not expecting. 
Thanks for watching this guide. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel and take a look at learntheleague.com.